Hey everyone, welcome back to my home recording studio videos. I haven't been able to release one of these in a while and I apologize for that. Uh, if you look at my update video from earlier today, that'll explain a lot of it. But anyway, I want to get back into this because I've been getting a lot of comments, a lot of questions, a lot of uh, messages and I love responding to them and I love talking to all of you guys. But I'd love to keep creating these videos so we can actually um, you know, expand about, about what we're doing with our home, re home studio recording. So today I want to make a video that has been requested of me quite a bit that I really want to talk about and that is how to record drums and how to record your keyboard or piano. So let's get started on that right now. Okay, so I don't have a full acoustic drum set in my house because I live in a relatively small house and my studio is not that big. So. I'm going to show you guys how to record with that, but first I want to teach you the basics of recording a drum set. Now keep in mind, I'm no expert at drums, I don't really even play drums that well, I have recorded people who play drums though. But a lot of this is just basic stuff, and a lot of it's going to be on the cheap, because I've noticed that myself included, a lot of the people that watch these videos are people looking for inexpensive ways to do their home recording studio because it's a really expensive endeavor and a lot of us are either my age or older or younger and you just kind of want to you know practice with it and learn with it so I'm going to teach you guys the basics, basics of recording a drum set using my my Dijube. so what I want to show you guys is first of all this I'm using two mics to record it. Never record a drum set with one mic. That's not a good idea because drums, you know, come from all different angles. So I'm going to show you the basics of miking one on this Dijou Bay before we talk about bigger acoustic sets or other alternative options. Now, notice I have two mics. I'm using my Audix OM2s. Now, keep in mind, I use my Audix OM2s because like I've said in multiple videos, they're good quality mics that aren't terribly expensive that tend to work for pretty much everything. I've recorded a number of drum sets using these mics and it's turned out pretty well. But I do know that there's a lot of, this, uh, this is a source of a lot of discussion in the comments. So I am going to link you to um, a different set of mics in the description uh, because there are certain sort of mic sets that are designed for drums. There's smaller mics, there's four or five of them. One of them's supposed to be on the hi-hat, one of them's supposed to be on the bass, and all that sort of thing. And you can definitely get a mic set like that. But if you're running like your Audix OM2, something like I am, into an audio interface, this is a really great way to do that. Um, now, notice what I have is I have one mic up here. Now it's not like, hello there, it's not like right on top, you know, it's because that's you're not going to get a great sound right there. What I'm doing is I'm kind of positioning it, you know, angled, going into the top of the drum. That way you're getting the top sounds of the drum, okay? That way you're getting that sound, you're getting the high acoustics of it from the very top. Now, every drum has a bass sound. Keep in mind, a Dijou Bay, for example, is hollow. This is hollow in the inside. I could reach my hand through the bottom. So, since it's hollow, I have my other Audix OM2 over here, this one, and this one is pointing downwards towards the bottom of the bass. That way, that one's getting the bass sound. You record them simultaneously, that way you get the high sound and you get the bass sound, and they sound really nice together, and you can, if you put them on different tracks, you can actually you know, equalize them and mess with, like, do I want more bass, do I want less of the top, that sort of thing. Uh, I actually know some people, I'm not sure if this works, uh, keep in mind this is all subject to testing, where if they have something like a hollow Dijube, they can actually like put the mic up inside of it. I've heard of people doing that. Um, not vouching for it, not sure if it works. Uh, maybe you guys can say in the comments if you know about that. But what I do know is that you definitely want to have your kind of higher sound and you kind of want your lower sound. So that's how you record the Dijube. Now I also want to talk a little bit about how you're going to record acoustic drums. Acoustic drums are, you know, your big drum sets, you know, rock band type stuff. And I want to talk a little bit about that in the next segment because that's what a lot of you guys are trying to do. So let's talk about that. Okay, so when you are recording acoustic drums, I don't physically have them here to show you, but I have recorded them. I have a couple suggestions for this. Um, one is that if you're really serious about it, you should get some sort of acoustic drum miking system like I talked about. I'll link an example of one or two of those in the bottom. Um, and those usually tell you where to click them. They're basically little clip on mics, they're like that long. And it's basically like clip this near the hi-hat, clip this near the snare, that sort of thing. But a lot of people can't do that. So because those those sets can range anywhere from, you know, 150 to, you know, $3,000. So I'm going to talk about the cheap easy way that I've done this. Um 
when I've recorded for a couple bands because every once in a while a local band in my area will hire me to record for them. Um, so what I've done is I'll bring two or three of my Audix OM2s and as you watch these videos you'll know that I'm absolutely ecstatic about those microphones. Um, even though they're really trade, you can, they're really, um, you know, you can trade them out pretty easily with like Shure SM57s or 58s. They're basically the same microphone. But um, I really like those like, uh, you know, those dynamic type microphones. I really like them. I think they work for pretty much everything. They sound great for guitars, vocals, all the whole nine yards. Watch my other videos. Drums. Let's talk about drums. When you're using like these Audix OM2s, for example, um, Obviously, you might only have two or three. So I remember when I was recording a rock band uh, about a year ago, and what I did to record them is I took one of my Audix ON2s and right in the top of the drum set where the dudes say this is like his snare because your snare tends to be like right here and here's your other drum thing. Obviously, I'm not a person who plays drums. Anyway, what I did is right, I basically in front of his drum set, I put this in front of it and basically kind of stuck it in his face, and pointing downward, kind of left towards the snare. That way I could get that good snare sound, but I could also get the drums surrounding it. Then I took another uh, um, mic, and I basically made it specialized specifically to your big bass drum. And I basically took that one and brought it down near the bottom, kind of angled it, and put it about, you know, two and a half, three feet off from the actual drum. Very similar to how you re would record a, you know, a guitar amp, which you can watch on my videos on how to do that. That seemed to work pretty well. Um, in addition to that, I took kind of a third Audix OM2, and I kind of stuck it like behind him, kind of ranging towards his hi-hat. And I recorded them simultaneously. That way I kind of had the hi-hat sound, I kind of had the, um, you know, the bass sound, and I kind of had the middle sound. And you know, that worked pretty per uh, decently well, because I was able to record them simultaneously, change the levels and all of them, and that worked pretty well. So that's how I would suggest doing that, um, unless you want to be much more serious about it, in which case there are numerous um, actual drum rigs out there in which you can do that with. So that's that. Now I want to talk about alternatives if you're living in like a smaller studio like me where you don't have big acoustic drums, maybe you don't know how to play drums that well, but you still kind of need them for your recordings. So let's talk about that. This is the electric drum set, and it can become your best friend if you're in a home recording studio. Basically, it's really nice because you have a bunch of different presets on it. Uh, you know, you can change through about 50 different drum sounds. You don't really need to be an expert to, pay, to, uh, to play it, and biggest of all, it doesn't break the bank. Um, this specific one, I used to have the, uh, the Yamaha, like, YM58s or whatever. They're basically the th uh, four-pad kind of circular thing that Best Buy sells for under a hundred bucks. And those work okay if you're doing, like, a really, really basic rhythm. But even then, I wanted something that was a little bit more complex. So I got this. I remember I bought it on Amazon. And I'll actually put a link to it because it's a really great, uh, set that you wouldn't think is awesome, but it totally is. I think I got it for like 120 bucks or so. Link will be in the bottom. Anyway, this is the Pio Pro PTED01. So PTED01. Um, this thing works really great because you got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You have seven pads. These tend to be your hi hats, and they're kind of positioned in the same exact way a normal drum set would be. Uh, you know, snare. That one other drum that's not a snare. Once again, not a drummer. Um, and that sort of thing. And uh, this worked really well for me for a couple of reasons. First of all, you plug it directly into your audio interface using like the headphone out. That tends to work pretty well and the audio quality is actually really good. I actually got a drummer to come in for me and help me with it and actually help me play it because I don't know how to play it. So um, my point is it was a cheap way, it didn't break the bank, plugged directly into an audio interface, sounded great. Um, you can hear examples of that on the Twin Thieves Masquerade album, which we actually recorded with this. One tip that I have for you guys, that this is really invaluable that I learned. When you normally play with these electric drum sets, you get like one or two pedals. The, the, they usually, uh, they're usually they usually for like the thing that like holds the hi-hat down. Um, you guys can tell me what that is in the comments. And then there's also one for your bass pedal. Now, they're usually going to give you these cheap little things. Like this tiny little thing, you can barely tell if you're clicking it or not because it's so freaking small. It's ridiculous. So, one thing I would suggest using, if you have it, and a lot of people have them because they occupy the basements of thousands of, of gamers around the world that no longer use them is if you have a uh, Guitar Hero or Rock Band pedal from the drum set those are really good for these because they have the same type of plug they plug directly into where 
this thing would. So get rid of that thing. And then they plug directly in, and they actually have a lot of cushioning and a lot of function. And they're really cheap. You, I'm pretty sure you can even buy them on Amazon for less than 10 bucks, just a pedal alone. And those are going to be a lot better and a lot more responsive. So that's kind of my, my workaround MacGyver trick to using pedals with these things. So I would highly suggest these things are really great. Check them out. Electric drum sets may be the way to go. Let's talk about keyboards and pianos now, since I also wanted to talk about that. Okay, so let's talk about recording pianos. Just like drums, you're going to have a couple options. You're going to have your acoustic option, which is like your grand piano, your school type piano, like, like a, a real piano. And then you're also going to have an electric option. Now the electric option is more common nowadays, so I'm going to talk about that first. Here is my uh, digital piano that I have, okay? And this thing sounds great because I can actually put a lot of different settings on it, you know. Like a you know a piano, and you know I can actually mix sounds that kind of make it sound like a stringed instrument if I'm doing the. And that works really well, especially you hear in the background of some of the tracks on my new album, along with some of the tracks on Masquerade. You'll hear that we actually took the root note and kind of and I actually like played like synths behind it, which sounded really cool. Anyway, aside the point. When you're recording one of these things, it's fairly simple. To be honest, when you're recording a digital instrument, it's really as simple as plugging it into the headphone port. Basically, this thing has a headphone port on the bottom of it. I plug a one-fourth connector, a guitar connector, to that directly to the audio interface. I keep the volume kind of like in the middle on this thing, and then I kind of keep it on the middle on the audio interface, maybe down a little bit. I usually use the interface to control the volume rather than this because that way you're, it's a little clearer and then you should be able to record just fine and monitor it from your software like GarageBand uh, that way you're using the headphone port and that'll work if you have uh, a digital piano and it'll also work if you have like a keyboard or that sort of thing or a MIDI um, that's how I would suggest recording those as simple as plugging it in and watching your levels and monitoring it through a different source um, when you're talking about acoustic pianos um, and they're a little bit harder to record, obviously, because you're going to need a mic of some sort. Um, obviously, you could. I would suggest like some sort of instrument mic, like a maybe an SM57 would be would, a sure SM57 would probably be a good bet for that. Um, if you want to use something like the OM2s, really, here's what I would suggest. Uh, obviously, when you have a when you have a acoustic piano, you have the you have you know the cab thing like opens up, right? So basically, when that opens up kind of put your mic in at an angle, you know, don't exactly like put it inside, but put your mic at an angle, kind of like that. Imagine that like it's opened like right here, and you can kind of like put it through there. Maybe you want another one on the other side. Maybe you want one going directly to the middle. Anyway, very, very similar to the drums. The best thing you can do is take two or three mics, attack it from different angles, um, record them all simultaneously that way you can actually mess with mess with the volumes a little bit because you may have your deeper notes down here and your higher notes up here so maybe you want this mic here to be a little bit less loud than the mic up here if you're playing something that's very that note driven rather than that note driven so that's what I would suggest for that um, you know just mess around with it because really what it boils down to when recording an acoustic instrument is taking your microphones and I'm just attacking it from different angles just figuring out uh, does this sound good at the bass over here does this sound good at the top part over here do I want to attack it towards the middle do I want to put it at an angle normally I'll tell you that putting things in an angle tends to give you a wider range than if you're just like like that, you know, just like directly down at it. That's that's no way now. I would highly suggest going like like that towards it. So that's really just the gist of it, you know. That I mean, plug in a plug in electric instruments, output them to your um, uh, interface, and you know what? That's really all you gotta do is just uh, output your instruments, and then on acoustic ones, just ensure that you're miking them correctly. And that, and I'm sure there's a couple diagrams for that online on ways you can mic those instruments. But just, you know, mess around with it. That's really the best thing you can do. And use something like those Audix OM2s or use something more like an instrument mic, like the 57s. I bet you could even get some of the drum mics I talked about earlier in the video. And in all honesty, those actually would probably work for a, for a um, you know, a piano. 
So, you know what, just, just mess with it. That's all I got to suggest for you guys. So that's actually all I have for you guys today. Um, if you have any questions, any comments, any um, you know suggestions, uh, any questions about gear, or is this piano good, or is this piano bad, or is this interface good, or is this bad, or should, would this mic work for this? I get a lot of those comments, and I always respond to them. I always respond. So by all means, just ask them in the questions below, and I hope that this helped you guys learn how to do your drums and learn how to do your pianos. Um, thanks so much. Uh, if you like these videos, by all means, please subscribe. Please share them, please comment, please like them. That really means a lot to me. Thank you very much, and um, have a wonderful day.